Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft, welcome. This is my demonstration video on how I do my tea towel toppers. For those of you overseas, you might call them kitchen towels, hand towels, bathroom towels, dish rags, that sort of thing. But I will refer to it as a tea towel because that's what we call them down here, down under. So, my tea towel topper. I've often shown the tea towel toppers that I've made and the tea towels for my charity store. They are my number one seller. Um, they're very popular. I've developed a clientele following and I have done commissions on different ones. Not that I'm keen because it becomes a bit of a production line. I have um, sold 39. I thought I had 40 and sold out 39. None left at one market. But the least amount I've sold is 15. They're very popular down under. I don't know about other parts of the world. Subscribers and loyal followers have often requested a tutorial, but the best I could come up with is a demonstration. And that's because you can't really do stitch counts and different things with a tea towel topper. A lot of it is judgment. So, I'll show you some of mine and I'll explain why. Tea towels come in all sizes. Long, this is your standard size. Or you can get these crafty ones that are double sided. You can cut them in half and have two little singles. Or me, I tend to fold them over and do them double with a tea towel across the top. Tea towel topper across the top. I have had singles donated for a charity store last Christmas. I had five of them. Now, normally I have three price points, starting with the cheaper to the more expensive, but at Christmas I had four, and the singles, all five, one lady bought. So there you go. You never know what people would like. But for me, I like to do them double. Now, you can fold them different ways, like that in half, and have both sides. And for the bigger ones, I do what I call like fold them in half and then turn them into thirds like that. It's a bit hard to show you on camera, but I'll show you one finish. So these are a couple I've made for an upcoming market. That's one I folded in half and I've done the top up. Now I will always pick a color that goes with the tea towel to make it pretty including the button i haven't put buttons on these yet but it will have a button this one is the one of the bigger ones that i showed you i fold special in like that sorry there'll be background noises i'm not professional i don't have a professional setup to do a demonstration the lighting is what it is my neighbor's house is being completely rebuilt inside after the flooding went through and there's a lot of noise, but I'm choosing to do it today. So there you go. That's the one that is folded like that. Now, I do have a couple of older, whoa, that just went crashing. Older male clientels who put in special orders for full length with a towel top or across like that. Um, they like to be able to still wipe their dishes and hang them up. So the idea being you can hang your tea towel in your kitchen or bath towel in the bathroom. I did make three different blue ones for a lady, a special commission. She had three boys and she wanted three bath towels, so that hand towels, so that the boys would learn to wash their hands when they use the bathroom. So yes. Why am I popular? My customers say it's because the edging is very strong. It doesn't fall apart in the wash or come off and that topper lasts as long as the tea towel and they look pretty. They hang nicely, they drape nicely. They are perfect for Mother's Day gifts, teacher gifts. I'm trying to think what people have bought them for. Teacher gifts, Mother's Day gifts, housewarming gifts, um, just a little thank you gift, birthday gifts. And at the right price, they're not that expensive. Secret Santa gifts, all those sort of things. That's what people tell me they buy them for. I had a small business buy 
10 off me because they wanted to do away with paper towels and the electric hand dry in the men's bathroom and um, I made one for every day of the week with a couple to spare so that the lady in the office would change the towel over and that's what they wanted them for. It was a unanimous decision. So there you go. They are my number one seller. Uh, I haven't had anything else beat them in sales so far. But let's start with the demonstration. The demonstration, I hopefully I will be able to do in steps so you can follow it and work out what I'm trying to do. You need to be an advanced beginner crocheter. You'll need to know how to do some sewing, basic sewing, single crochet, double crochet. But the most important skill of all is knowing how to fudge your stitches. That's why it's not a tutorial. You need to be able to fudge because tea towels come in all shapes and sizes and there's not an exact science to doing a top up. So there you have it. We'll start with step one next and get you started on your tea towel topper. Okay, the things you will need. You'll need a tea towel, of course, whichever one you choose. A sewing needle, definitely wide enough to take yarn but sharp enough to go through the fabric. A few pins always helps. Some yarn or crochet thread. Now I use this crochet cotton from a discount store. It's a three ply cotton. It takes a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook they recommend. It's $2.50 a ball and I get two tea towel toppers out of this one ball. There's no yardage on it, it's a 50 gram ball. I don't know if I said that. Now, for me, I use a three millimeter crochet hook. This is my favorite hook for tea towels. I just like it, it works well, but it's up to you. What yarn you use, what crochet hook. You can use leftover scrap yarn, but remember, if you use a four weight, four weight or a 10 ply yarn, it's going to be heavy, so you need a heavy tea towel. You'll need scissors, a stitch marker is handy, and buttons. For me, I, it's pretty standard because I've made them for years. I use a button this size, which is about the size of an Australian 10 cent piece coin. But that's what you will need. Once you're organized, come back and we'll get started on our tea towel topper. So you've got your tea towel and you've decided on how you're going to fold it. For these shorter tea towels, depending on the length, I do my tea towel topper pretty much close to the top fold. Now what you're going to do is take some of your yarn or crochet thread and back stitch doubled over. You will double it over in your needle and back stitch an edging across the fold or where you're going to put your topper. The reason I say back stitch is these back stitches here come in handy when you have to fudge. Sorry about my ends. Because what you will be doing is you will be putting your crochet hook under, sorry, I should put my glasses on, I might see better, each stitch to put your topper. You must make sure your corners are very secure. You don't want them lifting off because you're going to crochet around and envelope the top. That's why the back stitches are handy. You want to try and keep your stitch count even with the front and back. And the back stitches help because you have this double overfold where you can sort of fudge it. That's where you start fudging it to get your stitches even and envelope the top. So once you have sewn your edging and you're happy with it, you're going to start putting your topper on. So you will join your yarn however you want and you will single crochet under each stitch across. Sorry, it's really hard for me to crochet on camera. Just keep going across under each stitch making sure your stitch count is even when you get to the end. And then you're going to go around and do the back and keep your stitch count at an even number. It helps when it comes to the topper. It also helps to have a bit of a tail on your joining yarn in case your corner 
does lift. When you're starting out, you think, oh, it's lifting. You can actually use that to stitch it down at the end with a bit of sewing. Once you have your topper on there, no one notices. And through trial and error, that's how I started with mine. You'll see here these ends. This is where I've knotted, gone in and started. That's where I finish my back stitch. And that'll get enveloped in. I'll trim it up a bit. But the same here. I'll go in through the fold. I will anchor my corners really well so they don't lift. So continue to crochet across the top and envelope your border top. But don't close it off. I'll show you what I mean. Won't be a second. You just do it in continuous rounds. I thought of that. You can do it either way. But I just continuously around. It's not that hard. And I... That's what your envelope top will start to look like. I've sent my hook flying and my stitches are coming undone. When you get to the end, so your envelope top should come over your fold because you're going to close it up and envelope it, of course. So make sure you do enough rounds. For me, it's usually three. Some of the bigger towels might take four. Some of the smaller ones might take two. The number of rounds you do is up to you. When you're closing in the top. So when you have done enough rounds, you're going to envelope the top. And you do that by crocheting both sides together with single crochet. Lining up your stitches. Sorry, very difficult with camera. Like that. Just closing it up like that. Make sure your number of stitches across the top is even you still want that even stitch count but if you have to fudge it you'll have to fudge it so you go along and close in the top once you have reached that point come back for part two starting on the actual topper itself the fancy bit welcome back to part two as you can see second tea towel I'm using two for filming purposes so this is going to be the start of our lacy pattern section. This one here has up to about there. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, a lot of fudging may occur, but it's up to you. But you just get it to look a little pretty. So what I've done is my count worked out to that I will have two on the shoulders each end and I will do four in pattern stitches in between. So... I chain three and turn my work, uh, which is a double crochet. I then did another double crochet, chain one, miss one space, double crocheted four. Chain one, miss one space, double crochet four. And I will do continue with that pattern till almost to the end. So it's chain one, sorry, double crochet four. As I said, it is a demonstration and it is trial and error. So to get this, you should basically count all your single crochet across the top and decide what your pattern will be. If you can stick to keeping your shoulders strong and the four by miss one pattern, it's pretty easy. That's what I recommend that that's your pattern should be. So you chain one, miss one double crochet four should be the major part of the pattern with the other odd numbers being because it's like divisible of five I think on the shoulders and keeping your shoulders different because they will curl in anyway so do that all the way to almost the end until you have your for me three stitches left and I'll be back with you shortly so I've completed my first row of my pattern, finishing with a single crochet, miss one and two on the end. So my shoulders have two, my pattern in between has four. This is what I recommend because it's easy to work out. But it's up to you. As I said, if you're more experienced, you can change it up a bit. But this is what I do. You then chain three and turn your work because we are going to start decreasing. So what we will do is that first chain three is a double crochet. We will then 
double crochet into the next stitch giving us our two for the shoulder chain one miss that space again double crochet into the first double crochet of the four then we will double crochet sorry I find it really hard with cotton on camera two together double crochet into the last one of the four and single so you are reducing decreasing and making three stitches rather than four so you've chained one double crochet double crochet two together I help if I free that up a bit double crochet two together double crochet chain one repeat and do that till the end or almost to the end to about here till you get to your two double crochet shoulder and I'll meet you there so you've done your decrease row your first decrease row you're almost at the end you've chained one and you're just going to do a double crochet and then a double crochet into the top of chain three you chain three one two three turn your work we're about to start our second row of decrease you can see it's starting to arc in and it's going to arc in a lot more but that's what we want we want this nice arc to the top of our tea towel topper so your chain three is a your chain three is a double crochet we'll do another double crochet chain one another double crochet and then the next two will be a double crochet two together one two together chain one double crochet double crochet two together sorry if I'm keep going off camera a bit it's I find it difficult to film chain one I'll show you again so you do a double crochet double crochet sorry two together and that's what you will do almost to the end and then when you get to the two at the end you will do a double crochet a double crochet into the top of the chain three and chain three ready to turn your work so we've done another decrease row we're about to do another one so you chain three and turn your work that becomes a double crochet double crochet into the top of the next stitch chain one and now we are just going to do double crochet two together over these two stitches chain one and repeat and repeat that to almost to the end two together sorry double crochet two together chain one and go to almost the end until you get to the shoulder again here which is here and do chain one double crochet and double crochet into the top of chain three chain and and stop there don't chain any more because then I'll show you what you have to do again so you did your two together and you finished with your double crochet double crochet into the top of chain three you will then do chain three turn your work and then you will double crochet in every that's chain three is a double crochet you will double crochet in every stitch and every chain space sorry across the top double crochet all the way across including in the spaces 
until you get to the other end. So that is the end of our lacy part section. As you can see, it's arced in even more. It's quite even. Our next section will be our single crochet section and we'll be reducing it even more. Look, you don't have to do a lacy section. You can just keep doing double crochet and decrease as you think and get this arc going. I have done that before. I just think this lacy holy, sorry, hiccups, lacy holy section gives it a nice look. So come back for next part. You just chain one here at the end, turn your work and get ready to start the single crochet section. So we're back for part three, section three, with our pink tea towel. So we're at this point now where we're going to do our single crochet decreases. But first of all, chain one and single crochet in every stitch across, preparing it ready to do decreases in the next row. So just chain one, single crochet all the way to the end, chain one and turn your work. So I've done my single crochet across, chain one, turn my work. You can see there's a nice arc there. And what you're going to do is decrease your arc. Now the best way to do that is count the number of stitches and work out your decrease. So for me, I will be doing three single crochet, single crochet two together. I recommend you have a single crochet at each end, like to start with and one to finish with, to keep the shoulders strong. So this is where it's up to you how you fudge your stitches, how, how you make it work. But don't decrease too quickly and bring it in too tight. You want it to be gradual. And that's why mine will be three single crochet, then crocheting two single crochets together until I get to the other end. So I've single crocheted across, decreasing, doing three single crochet and then two together to the other end. As you can see, it's arced in a bit more. I have done one, sing one chain and then I am turning my work. My next decrease row for me will be two single crochet, then two together to bring it in a bit more. So I'll see you at the end of this row. So I've done that again. I have single crocheted two, then two together. It's arced in a bit more. Chain one, turn my work. And I'm going to do another decrease row, probably one single crochet, then two together. The aim is to get your arc to about 10 stitches. Anything less than 10 can look a bit narrow for your hanging tab, but I aim for about 10 stitches. So I will either fudge it till I get 10 stitches and have a nice arc. Your hanging tab is this. You want to get it to about 10 stitches to there. And that's what you're aiming for with your single row decreases here. Now, on average, it takes me three, sometimes four rows, depending on the width of my tea towel. But that is what we're aiming for with our last row of decreases to get it to 10 stitches. So I've got it to 10 stitches and it's a nice curve to it. You chain one, turn your work and you will single crochet across in these 10 stitches. Chain one, work across. You will do anywhere between 25 to 30 rows, depending on how long you need your hanging tab on your tea towel to be. Don't be concerned it's curving in like that. It's a little hard to show you on camera how it's curling up because that's how we want it to hang. So here you can see, don't be worried about this. This is a fancy edging we will do at the end. But this section here is just single rows of crochet backwards and forwards with a chain one turning chain. And up to about the buttonhole here is anywhere between 25 to 28 rows. Now, the way to test that is work out where your button is going to sit on your tab and how much you want in here. Me, I always try and get two finger spaces, sometimes a little more. This cotton is stretchy, so that's what I aim for. 
between 25 to 30 rows depending on how much space I'm getting and once you get to your row where you think your buttonholes start come back and join us in the last section where I show you how to do the button roll and a fancy edging to finish it all off. Welcome back to part four, uh, my demonstration of my tea towel topper. We will finish off with a buttonhole row and decorative edge. So I've crocheted about 30 rows for my hanging top and I'm now about to do the buttonhole row. So I've chained one to my work and I'll do four single crochets across four chain three one two three miss two and then do four single crochets across chain one turn your work that's what your buttonhole row will look like you've got a gap there for a button this is the size that works for me. You'll have to work out the size of your button and what works for you. So I've chained one to my work and I will single crochet back across. So that's two. the first four. And then I will do three into the chain we made for a single crochet chain one. three it's not always easy and then four more one two okay. like I said three four to the end chain one turn your work so yes crocheting with cotton on camera is not easy then I will single crochet all the way across again, which gives us a nice lip on our buttonhole row. I'll show you when I'm finished. Keep getting caught up here. chain one so there's your buttonhole and that gives you a nice lip for your button to hold make sure you make it big enough that's why I miss two and chain three it makes a nice gap so when you get to this end I'll just pause the video so you can catch up so you could uh, fasten off here cut your yarn fasten off and sew in your ends and leave it plain like that I have done that before when I haven't quite had quite enough yarn but what I do now to make it a little decorative and make the sides decorative, I will chain another two. So you've already got one, gives you a chain three. I'll miss a stitch and do a single crochet. I'll chain three, miss a stitch and single crochet. And I will do that all the way across the edge at the top. This is stitch, single crochet, chain three. Sorry if I keep knocking the camera. Three, one, two, three, chain three, single crochet. I will chain three and I will go down the edge, missing a stitch and doing a single crochet. But when you get to the pattern part, it'll have to be your judgment on how you do it because it's not as even as the single crochet part. But it does work out. I'm sure you can fudge it to make it work. And you get to the bottom and you finish off. I'll show you at the bottom. As you can see, you've got now this decorative edge down the side. When you reach the bottom, just far, um, cut your yarn and fasten off and then do the other side exactly the same way join so it's three chain miss a stitch single crochet until you get to the bottom and fasten off weaving your ends remembering if your um, corners aren't quite solid and perfect you can always use these to sew help, 
help sew the corners on. Sorry, hiccups again. But there you go. I'll show you the finished project. I'll do a summary at the end of um, what it's all about. Basically how it went. The two finished tea towels that I've done during the demonstration. And hopefully you've enjoyed it. And you will post pictures of your tea towels with the topper. So come back for the summary and we'll go through everything together. Thank you for watching so far. So welcome back to the summary of my demonstration for a tea towel topper. So you finished crocheting everything and you just need to add a button. See I folded mine over, that's where my button will go. Sometimes I use a matching button, I have a lot of these pink buttons. Or I'll use a nice pretty contrast button, just depends on what I have on hand. I source my buttons from um, Goodwill or charity shops. Often they'll have jars of different sizes um, for sale that they've cut off clothing that's no longer usable. See, there's the blue one finished. This is more of a quality towel and I will sell this for a lot more. If you decide you want to try selling these on your market stall, then I suggest you source tea towels, kitchen towels, whatever you want to call them, when they're in sales. Like at the end of Christmas, I'll buy a lot of, um, the previous year, I'll buy um, Christmas tea towels for the following year. So I've always got Christmas tea towels. And I'll always look for good value packs where there's like a pack of three and I'll work out what each one's going to cost. Use scrap yarn or a value price cotton yarn like I do and keep your costs down and then sell them at a reasonable price. Um, I've been doing them for years, so normally without filming or anything, I can whip one up in two hours, less than two hours, depending on interruptions, and usually when I'm watching television. So they are my tea towel toppers, how I do mine. Now remember, it is a demonstration. I've been reluctant to do demonstrations or tutorials. I did one a few years back. Um, on how to do a, a knitted tea cosy and I got a really I guess critical email that was far too critical and negative and nasty so if you're going to leave a comment please don't leave one on what I'm wearing my crochet techniques anything like that this is just a demonstration I am not a teacher I'm not a professional at filming and lighting and all of that it's just to help those subscribers who really wanted to know how I did mine and why they sell so well. If you want to support my channel, you can go to my Kofi shop and make a small donation to Emma's Quest, the charity I fundraise for and generally sell my tea towels for or donate for raffles for Emma's Quest. But that's up to you. The link to my Kofi account will be in the description below. And you can make a small donation there, showing your appreciation that it worked out for you. Look, like I said, your most important skill is how to fudge. And most of us learn to fudge stitches very early when we're crocheting. So guys, that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know sometimes the camera work wasn't great and the lighting wasn't great and there was background noises. But like I said... It's just a demonstration for my Yarny friends. Take care, stay well, bye for now.